Hey, what's up guys? It's Edgar here, and this is kind of a pseudo intro with an intro because I was just editing this video and I realized how inconsistent part one is with two. And the reason I did it this way is so essentially the first part of the video is a timeline of Infinite Warfare's downfall and uh, part two is just me talking about how I have hopes in the next Call of Duty. And yeah, I think it shows the contrast between the direness of Infinite Warfare and the optimism that comes from the new Call of Duty. So if in case you don't want to see the Infinite Warfare part, then you could just skip right here to this time code. Other than that, please enjoy the video. Get us, citizens of Earth, it's your boy Edgar here, and today is that time of year again where the quote-unquote Call of Duty leak comes out. So yeah, it's all but confirmed to be set in World War II, and I think that's great news for the franchise. Now, my topic of the video for today is, can Activision redeem themselves with this? Is this just another one of their shameless, manipulative tactics to try to lure in old fans again? Or, is this really the turning point in which they realize their mistakes and can finally get their shit together? Let's dive right in. Oh, and just for the record, I do not own this game. This is gameplay taken from the two free trials. Jesus Christ, two trials, that's sad. But yeah, I'm gonna get into that in a bit. So basically what I'm gonna do for this first section of the video is analyze the most recent Call of Duty title, Infinite Warfare. Even though the downfall started before, this is truly like the year we saw people actually take a noticeable stand against the series so let's get into why exactly this entry in the franchise didn't work out as activision thought it would let's take it back to where it all started baby that reveal trailer as of this recording on march 27th the dislike ratio is still insanely massive and this was the first true sign of call of duty's true downfall last year because this was the time in which people consumers and fans alike came together and said fuck you activision this is not the game we wanted we've gone space like the past six years why do we want a seventh year you know it's almost as if Activision knew the series was looking death right in the face because the announcement of Modern Warfare Remaster shows that they truly are pulling their last resort, you know? They're dangling fucking keys in front of a cat. Modern Warfare Remaster was the keys and the consumer is the goddamn cat, but you know what? Locking it behind an $80 paywall? We saw right past that shit, and the few people who bought it, screw you for supporting these bad practices. And then Activision learned the hard way that treating your consumers like shit is not the way to approach business because within the same time periods of their respective years, Infinite Warfare had absolutely abysmal pre-order numbers compared to Black Ops 3's pre-order numbers. And yeah, you gotta hurt businesses where their money is. That's the true way to make your voice heard and I'm so glad this happened. And let's just see how much further they can go down the rabbit hole of shit. And now we get to the multiplayer reveal, which is when I felt most personally victimized by Activision as they were insulting my intelligence. You see, at this point, they're screwing us over all unanimously, but this one felt like truly pushing the limits of my intelligence. You see, they promise, oh, this is gonna be a true boots to the ground Call of Duty experience, yet in the campaign, you're flying in space, okay? And then you can sometimes get out and actually move around in space, in a limited expanse, of course, and you fucking have to grapple onto shit and get into the ship and that is not boots to the ground that's literally the furthest thing you could get from boots to the ground god damn it and then the fucking multiplayer you got wall running from black ops 3 the exact same wall running and exo boost jumping shit they lie to our fucking faces and showed it in the multiplayer reveal trailer it's like one of the first things you see and it's just astounding how they're able to lie to your fucking face like that and think they could get away with it like if they had just not said it'd be a boots to the ground experience, I'd be like, whatever, this game sucks. But the fact that they had to lie about it to try to manipulate people, I I don't understand this company. These people are just fucking trash, man. And now we get to the time of the year in which the multiplayer beta came out. Now, I made a video on the beta and how much I hated it actually. You can go check it out under the Spooktober playlist. Highly recommend it because it basically says what I would have said in this section. Moving on. And if you thought all of those months of defiance from us consumers was just bluff, well think again because as we saw in day one, the top numbers for people playing online were 
only a quarter of what Black Ops 3 wore. Sad. Once again, everything is lower compared to Black Ops 3, which was actually lower compared to Advanced Warfare, so we are seeing a noticeable decline in the series' popularity. And Activision, being the self-mutilating masochists that they are, can't seem to stop digging their own graves even deeper than they should be because they decided to add supply drops back in December to Modern Warfare Remaster. Why they did this? Well, to make up for the loss in sales because they are trying to milk literally every cent out of this failed investment that they made into Infinite Warfare. It is so sad and tragic to see a beloved entry, AK Modern Warfare, be treated like such shit. Why couldn't they just release it on its own? Why can't it be, you know, unaltered, just release it as it was with updated graphics? No, they just, I'm telling you, they're self-mutilating masochists. They want to see how far they can dig this hole. And the desperation that's coming from them just keeps getting more pathetic as time goes on because at this point in the timeline, we see Activision desperately trying to get people to buy the freaking thing by releasing not one, but two free trials for the game. You could try out the first two levels, first 15 multiplayer levels, and first five zombie levels. Now, this was my time to get this gameplay and find out for myself if my hatred for the game was justified. And you know what? This game is actually worse than I thought it could be. This is hands down the worst Call of Duty I've ever played. And I really don't like any of them, really, for the most part, now that I think about it, except for Black Ops, Modern Warfare 1, Advanced Warfare, and parts of all the others. But as a whole, there's barely any I like, but this one just really takes the cake on the shit cake, you know? And now we have what many consider to be the magnum opus of Activision's greed, the Modern Warfare Remaster Variety Map Pack. Now this thing is a selling a map pack that was sold 10 years ago for $10, selling it again for $15, even though a remaster should contain all of the DLC. Now I had a person that will not be named try to defend this saying, oh, well inflation. And no, that's bullshit. Either way, it's still the same price that shouldn't be paid at all. And also, they said, oh, well, I don't mind it because this should be expected of Activision, you know? And that is the worst thing I've ever heard because it's people like that who make games like this possible. These games shouldn't exist. This greed shouldn't be accepted. But people who say shit like that are the reason they're allowed to get away with it because they're the kind of people who buy the Legacy Edition and eat all this shit up like it's goddamn Thanksgiving. <gasps> But yeah, I don't know if the story ends here for Infinite Warfare, but as of this recording, that is the most recent fuck up of theirs. Now, this is right before the new Call of Duty is officially revealed, so if anything else happens after this with Infinite Warfare, I won't know. Now let's move on to the second half of this video, is how can the e e Division, Activision redeem themselves from all this? Well, let me tell you. World War II truly is their roots. There can't be exosuits, so that's already a great start to this. If they just make a basic Call of Duty in the past, like, hell, they could even try doing a Call of Duty 3 thing by bringing vehicles in. I mean, it didn't do much for the multiplayer, but hey, it's better than goddamn exosuits. I'll tell you that much for free. But I think, in my opinion, I think what they're going to do is make tightly knit maps. I was about to say map packs. Well, they are going to have map packs, of course, because fucking Activision is going to be Activision, you know, but tight maps with a focus on guns and balancing them because Sledgehammer, now we're, like I said, we're getting into the second part of the video. Now I can talk about my love for Sledgehammer, man. I fucking love these guys. My personal top three favorite Call of Duties are Advanced Warfare, Modern Warfare 1, and Black Ops being the best of them all. But the fact that Advanced Warfare is the first Call of Duty from Sledgehammer, and it turned out to be really good, in my opinion, I think people hate it, but that's just them though, you know, everyone is entitled to their own opinion. And the fact that this is their first Call of Duty and it was this good, it's just really astounding. I have 1000% faith in this studio, like, there's no way they can fuck this up. The only way they could fuck this up is if they try adding a remaster behind another $80 paywall to this new game, which I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, maybe if they do that and learn from their mistakes and don't do DLC for DLC, 
then maybe it could work. We'll just have to wait and see. But for now, I have faith because, as I was saying about gun balance, I think this new Call of Duty will be focused on gun balancing because if you don't have movement as a main priority, since there's no exosuits or boost jumping, they're gonna really have to hone in on actual skills again, you know? You gotta be the fastest shooter. You gotta know which gun to use you know for which map and which kind of situations if you're dealing with players who like to be flanky then you might want long range if you're going to be the kind of guy who tries to flank then you're probably going to want a shotgun you know things like that you know subtle strategy in a game that is pretty mindless for 12 year old man children and now with that being said i think yes sledgehammer will make this a finely tuned game and in terms of matchmaking multiplayer connectivity i don't know call of duty seems to be so and so with that on launches but you know what it all works out in the end and sledgehammer these guys man i don't know because i feel like i'm in the minority here saying that they're better than infinite i was about to say infinite warfare what the fuck is their name infinity ward why would they name their recent game so closely to their studio name it's so stupid but anyways i'm getting a little off track here yeah so if you enjoyed Advanced Warfare and like Sledgehammer games now, I think you should totally have faith. I think Activision can redeem themselves after Infinite Warfare. Literally, the fate of the series rests on this game and Sledgehammer games being the one to do this is totally fine. I have faith. I can't stress that enough. I have complete faith this new Call of Duty is going to be good. I haven't given a shit about a new Call of Duty since Black Ops 2. I bought Black Ops 3 at mid- oh, I didn't buy it at the midnight release, but I pre-ordered it the day before the midnight release because Chad wanted me to go to the midnight release with him. I'm like, that's my boy. I can't say no to him. And fuck it, yeah, I got Black Ops 3 and it was fun for the first couple hours, I guess, but then it kind of became infuriating the more you play it and learn that people start being bullshit in the game it's just like somehow their shotguns are better than yours and i'm thinking will this game have that same problem where weapons will for no reason be mod i was about to say modded nerfed or buffed i don't know if they do that in call of duty's the way they do in real shooters sorry fanboys rainbow six siege is a real shooter not call of duty but anyways yeah, I want to know how they're going to handle this because like I said, I believe they have to focus on gun balancing and shit, but I wonder if they're going to continuously tweak it throughout this game's lifespan. And the fact that it's in a World War II setting, there might not be as much customization, which is fine, but I don't want it to be barren like Battlefield 1's did. That game really got old to me because of the fact that there's nothing to do once you reach that, um, what was it? Class level peaked? It was like, what, level 10 or something? And you had no incentive to keep playing. You had all the weapons, and what do you do now, you know? You just keep playing with your weapons. Congrats, you have nothing else to work towards. And yeah, if they just prioritize the gun balancing, and maybe they can bring back the Black Ops system where you earn currency. I don't think they will ever bring back wager matches in a Call of Duty game, even though Black Ops is... I may call it a masterpiece in video gaming. I'm not sure. It sounds really stupid to call a Call of Duty a masterpiece, but I believe Black Ops truly is one of the greats of all time in terms of games. And they're never going to bring back wager matches, so if they prioritize money making, in multiplayer to earn your weapons, I think that would add much longevity to a game that might not have as much customization, like I said, since it takes place in World War II. And it feels like I'm going all over the place in the second section of the video, but yeah, this is just me kind of fanboying out over Sledgehammer games and uh, Black Ops, I guess, in some cases, you know, shoehorn my love for that game whenever I can. Shout out to Black Ops. Anyways, yeah, I'm being random because this is me spouting out my hopes and dreams, and that's kind of what the whole point of this video is. The question was, do I have faith that Activision can redeem themselves after Infinite Warfare? As you can see from my optimism, yes, we have to be hopeful. We have no choice but to be hopeful. I know a lot of people are saying, you know, after... Advanced Warfare, fuck Call of Duty. Okay, cool. After Black Ops 3, fuck Call of Duty. Okay, cool. After Infinite Warfare, fuck Call of Duty. Alright, you have all reason to say that. If it weren't for Sledgehammer, Call of Duty would be dead, alright? I'm just gonna be... I don't care. <laughs> like that meme. 
I don't care. I'm gonna say it. I don't care that you broke your arm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so stupid anyways. Yeah, that's how I feel like I don't care I think sledgehammer is the one true messiah of the call of duty franchise if they fuck this up This series is done for and with that being said I think that's all I have to say about this and if you enjoyed the video or have optimism of your own, leave a like, comment down below what your optimism's for, or if you think this game is for sure gonna fail, tell me why. You probably also have a legit reason to think that. At this point, anything in the series is up for grabs. There's no sealed fate, only Sledgehammer can seal that fate for us, you know? And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. You go have yourself a great day, leave a like, comment, don't forget to subscribe, and I am Audi with the... <laughs>